It's another beautiful Saturday from my side here, as we always do. Uh, we always come back. It's our primetime edition, and it's always, always a pleasure having you guys on the platform. Thank you to all our first respondents. That's what I call you guys all the time. You guys are always here on time, always taking your seats on time. First set of people to always come and dust the church, dust the mugs, uh, clean everywhere and make everywhere clean and have a table for other people to come into the building. Thank you for always sticking with us. It's always a pleasure hosting this space with you guys. Thank you so much. It's important I always start this space with gratitude because without you guys, there will be no one. So thank you so much. Thank you to my brother N6, uh, Jimmy, uh, well-being in Nigeria. Um, Otumba will not be here on time. Probably we'll be listening from the, from the speakers. But we'll be having a wonderful space as we have always done on this platform. Hopefully try to top up every space. I think every space comes with its own, uh, with its own lessons, with its own, uh, with everything that comes with it. I think we cannot just say this space, that space. Every space has something in it. So I hopefully today's space again, there will be surprises on the space again today. I promised surprises the last time. And I think I did a little bit of that. Hopefully today again, more surprises will be on the space today. If not, uh -huh, fingers crossed. So I just say, please, I just want, I, I, um, I, I am someone that I, I, um, I don't give what I don't have. I give only what I have. And what I have in my heart and what I have to give everybody today is joy, peace, happiness. Uh, that's what I want to give everybody that's going to listen to us on this platform today. Joy, peace, happiness. Because today marks, and I, and I want to take you guys on, I'm going to take you guys on a very, very long, uh, um, um, I think, memory lane. The memory lane I'm going to take all of us on this platform today. I think it's one that everybody should be listening to. And please, stick with us as we're always on the platform. But before I jump into the conversation today, the topics are very, very clear, clearly spelled out. Um, there's no space to add more topics, but that was just what we're going to be discussing today and probably more. Um, I just want I just want to remind all of you as you come into this church, to this mosque, to this synagogue, as we always say on this platform, it is important you pay the house rules, you pay your tithes, and you bring your offerings to this wonderful, I think S is what S is called last time, auditorium, yeah. This auditorium of violence. So it is important you pay your tithes, you um you pay your tithes, you you um Bring in your offerings. If not, as usual, as you always say on this platform, your phone will break. Simple. It's not as difficult as that. Your phone will break. Yeah, so if you're listening to my voice right now, all you and you're wondering, probably you're new on the platform, what does this guy mean by tithe and offering? Where's the account number? No, the tithe, the offering is simply you retweeting and sharing this space. Let people know that number one space on Twitter is up and running. And as we always on this platform, we are going to educate ourselves. We are going to discuss issues based on facts and figures. Important, important, capital letter, facts and figures. Because man lie, woman lie, facts and figures, numbers do not lie. And that's what we have been doing for this on this platform for the past couple of months, past close to a year right now. I, thought, I, I think we started June, that June, July last year, that's when we started this platform. And here we are today achieving great things together as a family, as a movement, and we will continue. It is very, very important we say this. So thank you so much, every one of you listening to me on the platform. It's important. Please, guys, share the space, like this space. And big shout-out to all of you joining this space from our tweet, uh, our Facebook, listening to me on our radio station, listening to me on our YouTube channel. I try to make sure that I don't stop this space without giving you guys a shout-out and your flowers, too, because you guys are one big part of the conversation. You cannot be with us on the platform on Twitter, but you are listening to us. So understand that we too, we the here una, and we want you guys to understand that you are equally loved. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, guys. As I say on the platform, um, tomorrow um, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a wonderful, a wonderful space. I see close to three hundred of us on the platform so far, and just above a hundred retweets. So please, guys, hit the retweet button, share the space. Let's get people into this conversation. It's important. We, it's important we, we realize where we are coming from. I will say this, for the past couple of days, and let me just jump into the conversation right now. For the past couple of days, I think I have, I have, whew, I have morphed into, <laughs> I have morphed into a therapist. I have morphed into a, I've got, I've done so many roles in my life. I've never, I never, I never believed. I never invested that I'll be doing. But in the course of all this, thing, I, 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 if there's something I always tell people is hope, 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 
Hope is the greatest thing I will always sell to everybody. Hope, hope, hope. Believe, believe, believe. And because I said it so that the human mind is very fickle. Our minds are something that we are always in for the now. We are always in for the, um, it should be, it should be, we want it now. now. And I understand because I'm a human being also. We want something now. You, you tend to ask yourself, why is this man a billionaire and he's looking for more money? Why has this man achieved all this and he's looking for more achievement? With all his doctorate degrees, asking for, it is because the human mind is insatiable. And that is who we are. That's what we represent. But in the course of this conversation, I want us to understand that we are coming from somewhere and we are going somewhere. So it is important because I say this, for me, the greatest thing I have is to protect the, the sanity of the people that come on this platform. I cannot do beyond that. I can only do I can only do as much as I am empowered to do on this platform, which is to protect the science of people. And I say this all the time for people to understand here that if it is ten people that leave this place feeling better, I am totally satisfied. If it is a hundred people feel, leave this place feeling better, I am tot I, if it is all of us leaving this place feeling better, understanding, I am totally satisfied. But I will not be happy if anyone leaves this place feeling ah oh no. And I'm going to say this because if you leave this place feeling some type of way, it is because you are not yet in control of your emotions. And I say this because I understand emotions are a very, very important part of our lives, but it is important that as we move, we learn to control our emotions. Emotions are a, it's a fuel that gets to a limit. It, it, it has a limit that emotion can take you to, and it has a limit that you have to keep your emotions in check and begin to say, what else can we do? What can I do strategically? What can, and you start planning and you start thinking and you start moving. And you now see that whenever your emotions wants to come over you and you fact check your emotions, you will not get yourself in the right place of in the right place. I will share a story I had with, and I'm very happy that Wemin and Wem Ninja is up here and is up here hosting with us today because we had this conversation three days ago. Me, Wem Ninja, and pro probably. I hope uh, Joe the video to also come on this platform. He called me and I told him something. And everything I told him happened yesterday. It happened yesterday. But you see, our movement is a movement whereby people, um, um, I say, uh, when I say people, many people have, have, are in the movement and it is so much of a headless movement that you cannot, you cannot control the information coming in and the information going out. There are some people in this our movement that I don't know whether they are truly obedient or whether they are real obedient. And I don't really, and what I do is not to question anybody's role in this movement. I try to make sure that whatever you're doing, do it well. There are people that have used this movement to be all they do is dish out fake news. There's one girl like this, I always there. She's a she's the queen of fake news. There are people in this movement that all they do is to bring good news. There are people in this movement that all they do is to bring ginger. There are people that in this movement that well, we are. That's why when they say headless mob, I say I and I own a headless mob with my chest and with my mind because in a headless mob there are different divisions. There are people in this movement that are shouting protest. There are people in this movement that are shouting eye on the judiciary. There are people in this movement. There are we have various. We have various people doing different things. But you see me in this movement. My work in this movement is to help you understand the reality, to bring you back to reality, to bring the just back to reality for you to understand where you are, where you are heading to, and where you are going to, and where we are coming from. Because it is the major thing that I, will, I believe that we forget so much in this movement is where we are coming from. We tend to forget where we are coming from and and I'm so, so happy with how I, I, I know how many DMs I got the last time Madam Aicha was here a few days ago. And I know how many people told me how much, how, how, how inspired they were listening to her speak, how, um, how happy uh, uh, the, the kind of soccer she brought them. Because she did, she did something, reminded us of where we are coming from. And I think, I don't know who came up, I think Ms. Barrett came up here and also told us, count your blessings, name them one by one. And what I always say on this platform, he says, if somebody have told you two years ago that there will be a movement, in fact, I now gave you guys a story and I said, David Hundei, our own David Hundei, made a tweet that PDP boys were latching on that tweet. I'm sure many of you saw that tweet. And they were saying, David Hundei's tweet was saying, if you think 17 months are elections, Somebody will rise up, a party will rise up and come and defeat, the, and that is not PDP or APC. You're in for it. You guys saw that tweet. 
they've been doing in his in his in his glorious investigative distance did not see this happen. So nobody saw the obedient movement coming. Not me either. I did not see it coming. So I'm not going here and form like, ah, I, I know see I'm coming. No, oh. I they walk and they see spaces. People they open space, they talk about politics, I go jump, enter them. Talk, 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 talk. Sell my candidate. Because by this time, about a, a, a year ago, I want to remind you guys, a year ago by this time, P2B just left Labour Party, left PDP. Today was exactly that day he got he joined Labour. After touring 30 something states, in fact, 36 states, apart from Adam State, talking to PDP delegates. We all remember, I want, I'm going to take you guys, I'm trying to, I'm going to take you guys, take, refresh back our minds to understand where we are coming from, what we are achieved, and where we are meant to go to. So we don't, we, so that nobody come here and start feeling like a Bruce Lee, or feeling like a Batman, or feeling like it's you that you did not do anything special. We all collectively played our roles and our part in getting to where we are today. I remember May 27 by this time, after PDP, some, some obedient uh, and went to PDP's house in, in uh, Watata Plaza, Abuja. You guys can still remember screaming, give us OB, give us OB, doing uh, uh, a I, I was there, oh, I was one of them. Oh. oh, okay. Thank you, my brother. Rallying around, screaming, give us OB, give us OB. Oh, we know give us OB, we know we agree. Watata man came out. And Peter made a statement two days to this May 27, I think that was 25th of May last year. And he said, he called all the bot people, all the PDP bot chairman, and he made that statement. That was it. I knew that he can never, ever get this ticket. And in my place of work here, I had Nigerians, people that were not obedient. I had my brothers that, people that were not, that not obedient, because that I think obedient, the word obedient was not, was not even that as powerful as it is right now. People that were, did not believe in the P2B, that just believe that it is either APC or PDP, and that, Peter, and that an evil man cannot even be contesting for presidency at that point in time. I'm saying this, I'm talking of if fellow Igbos in where I'm, I, I, I work, fellow Igbos, fellow Nigerians, they know I'm waiting Igbo, my uncle become president. For where? How? You know, they post who won't vote him? Who him be? He had no, he had no, he had, because the man never did media at all. He never had, he never had the media talking about him, all the great works he achieved in Anambra State, that we had to come out of social media and we're saying things that people were saying, go and verify, and you go and verify and say that what we're saying is, and we're all true. You understand? So it was so, so, it's so, so important that we discuss and we remember where we are coming from and where we are going to. And in the course of this whole, and uh, uh, last year, uh, by this time, Peter made that statement and he told the board chairman in PDP that there is nothing more to share. If you guys can remember that video, that there is nothing more to share, that you people that we are on our road out, we are on our way out. This country, you guys are taking for a ride. There is nothing more to share. Nigeria is one more bad administration away from being a total failed state. And all those board chairmen were sitting at him, looking at him, and we could see the scorn on their faces. They were expecting a man that would come and say, okay, I'm going to give you 10, 10, 10 billion, 20 billion, because they know how much how wealthy Peter is. Many people will come out and tell you so many lies and so many fake news. Peter, Peter was one of the chief financiers of Article OB 2019 elections. Nobody will come out and tell you this thing. The man, and that was why you see when they were saying uh, uh, they wanted to borrow money. If you remember, they were saying PDP wanted to borrow money from a Fidelity Bank. And Peter and when Peter will be left, they could not borrow that money anymore. Peter financed that article of his elections, but he did it silently. Nobody knew. He did not come out to make all this noise, these fucking criminals are making up and down. No, no, no. The man did it codedly. He played his part. They finished the elections. They won the elections. Article located to Dubai. Peter was following up this case. Baba settled down, and that was when he now said, "Okay." Let us try again this year. Nigeria pressured him. Nigeria pushed him. Some, some people on his Twitter handle tell him, oh, guy, if you don't contest, we're going to swear for you. And Oga came out and said, I am contesting. These are my resume. This is my portfolio. This is what I have done before. Go and verify. I'm the only governor that has saved money for my state. Go and verify. I am the only one that built this and built that. Go and verify. I'm the one that took education from my state from the from number 28 to number first. 
till today, go and verify. I am the one that did this in the health sector, go and verify. I built all the roads in my state, go and verify. He did everything, he built and everything with records. And as I was leaving, I left billions. Go and verify. And I just were asking questions. On the same date. And gradually, remember the first video? Our ex-respected elder brother, Uncle Delo Momodu, came out and said, Labour Party, ha, it's not possible. I went to Labour Party, and, in, and, and in, in my first month, I was a candidate now. I went there in my first month. The first, they said they don't have money. And I brought out my first 10 million. And my leg started shaking. My leg was shaking. I said, ha, how do I do this? Thing? Who will finance Peter? Who will do this to Peter? It's not possible. He's dead on arrival. You remember this? You remember how Atiku said, Peter, will, will, will play all on a sound bite on the process of this space. I just, want to, I just want to cast your minds back to all the things they said we could not do that we did. All the things that challenged you, all the people that stood up against this movement, all the people that said it was impossible, all those that, the naysayers, that never gave us a chance. But we achieved everything we achieved, including winning these elections, beyond their belief. They did not see it coming. So I want you guys to understand that for everything, for anything, no matter how you want to see it, it is a we, we are in a point of position that we should be celebrating while we are demanding our stolen mandate. I don't want that defeatist mentality of, oh, no, 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 no. Everything Peter did in 10 months with the obedient movement was to expose the rot in the Nigerian system. Every aspect of the system has been exposed. The corruption in the legislative. Have you guys, did you guys ever know, uh, did anybody ever come out and say, I, I, I know now that they were oil bunkering. They used to steal billions and billions. And uh, uh, NFC was no longer remitting funds. Peter exposed the corruption in the oil sector. Did you guys forget? He was speaking on these issues. Opening our eyes, Peter said, someone said Peter turned all of us to politicians. He put turned all of us to legislators. And he has turned all of us now to lawyers. We are now lawyering everywhere. We are now seeing cases, cases that we are not, people that are, people that don't know what is local stuff. Just came out on social media and read law. Peter Obi's from Peter Obi's school of law, and in few months we will be greater lawyers than so many of us, so many of them. Nationalize Nigeria. That is how much. So for me, the energy. I don't want me. I'm. I. I. I'm not. that level right now because I, in the heart of my heart, know that I am following a man that will go and get back his mandate from the cops. For all more obedience than Peter Gregory will be himself. He took a chance in a system and stood against the most the most deadly and the most corrupt set of politicians in the history of this country. He has taken a whole lot that he I hopefully tomorrow I want us to I will really want us to push and get to know more from from because this man has taken shit. I remember that uh, uh, um, that Zoom meeting we had and I think Jack came and asked him, sir they have uh, they have blocked my account, they are doing this and I do that. He said if they block you, they are just a mere supporter. Your account. Imagine what they have done to me. Imagine what they are doing to me. And he gracefully takes this stuff in his heart and in his chest and moves on every day like nothing is happening. And so for me today, I just want us to understand that today marks one year anniversary because many of us have forgotten where we are coming from, what we have achieved as a movement. That a movement without any structure, no local government chairman, no councillor, 
no senator, no house of rep, no governor came out with their tears till one week to elections. Before being elected governor, say, eh, what one week to elections? Few days to elections. They were all working in the night. Today we're here. Tomorrow we're here. Next tomorrow we're here. They were nobody had nobody gave them nobody gave this man a chance. Nobody believed that it was possible. It was only this young Nigerians, and I always call them young Nigerians. I've seen Nigerians that believe in the new project because I've seen people in their 70s in this movement, people in their 60s, people in their 40s, 30s, in their their 50s, in their 20s. I've seen we have seen kids, we have seen children march. We have seen young children cry. They call it doesn't oh be, you see you, you you have seen this movement across the country. That a man that no for, that the man that came out from a region that is so despised in Nigeria rose from that region, rose against all the hatred, the bitterness, the anger, the animosity, and came out and say, Vote me because I'm coming out based on my capacity, my competence, and my character. And why other people were flying uh, a one religious ticket, flying bigotry? I think it was the not saying vote the not was only a man from the south. Tinubu was shouting at Milokon and fostering on us a Muslim Muslim ticket in a highly polarized and divided nation. Peter was saying, vote for me based on my character, based on my competence, and based on my capacity. And so I just want you guys, and we did that in our numbers. And we won the elections, and it was stolen from us. And we are now screaming, bring back our mandate. Some of our brothers are out in the street protesting. Some of our people are in, the, are in social media protesting. Some of our people are making noise, how they feel they can make noise. I am asking you, what are you doing? I saw a tweet today, earlier on today, and I said, um, uh, and I said, I think I saw that tweet. Uh, who made that? Sorry, post. I think from the I saw it from uh, Gazette Parallel Facts, and it was a post of the Supreme Court. It was a judgment because many people did not read that judgment yesterday. It was a judgment of um, the PDP case yesterday. And in the, in the, the, the court said, in the conclusion, the judge said that that case was meant to be thrown out. They don't know why PDP brought in that case and are using social media to put pressure on them. And I told you guys that on our platform here, they all come here to listen. They are here listening to you as we speak now. They know and understand the pulse of the nation. It is a two-way project, online, offline. And we say put pressure on the judiciary. It is you being strategic. It is us being strategic because I say this again for all obedience to understand. There is only one way we can get back our mandate. There is only one way we can get back our mandate. I'm not talking to you about your emotions right now if you want if you can if you're if you're emotional up on your sleeve you don't understand you will never understand what i'm saying there is only one way we can get back our mandates and that is through the judiciary that is the only way if we don't get our mandate through the judiciary then the next thing is nigeria no we know that democracy have died in nigeria then we can say the country can burn to the ground and we start it afresh but as long as it is us getting back our mandate, it can only be done through the judiciary. That is the only way. And that is why we must apply all the pressure that we can on that part, that arm of government. The judiciary must feel the heat of the obedient movement. The same way the executive felt our heat, we burnt down the executive that we had to, we had to, we, do you don't understand what I mean that we collapsed to major parties, APC and PDP. These are perennial politicians. Atiko has been running for 30 years. Tinubu has been running since they gave birth to him. Buari has been running with state power, with everything. We collapsed and crushed the executive arm of government. The same way we will collapse and we will crush the judiciary. It is a must we understand this. It is a must we understand that the, this next phase, that, that's why I don't want this energy should, for me, I'm saying my mind now, I don't want this energy to be scattered. This energy should be focused, the judiciary should must, the judiciary must feel this heat. They're already complaining. We have not started, they're already complaining. They must understand that if like, they do not do what is right, the judgment will start from them. The judgment of Nigerians will start from them. It is important to understand this. 
So while we are going, obedient, understand that the judiciary are the closest to us because the judiciary is the last hope of the common man. So that means the judiciary is closer to the common man. And the judiciary will always, always bend to the pressure of the common man as long as the common man is standing on the, right, on the, on the, on the side of truth. And I say this all the time because there are two courts. The court of public opinion and the main court. In the court of public opinion, Tinubu has lost the case. Our job in this court of public opinion is to put in pressure because please obedient to the next few days. This phase we are in right now, phase four, is the phase of gaslighting. It's the phase of mental, mental torture. It is the phase whereby they will tell you whatever you're seeing is not what you're seeing. They will put it in your face. Eh, eh, inauguration will not happen. Make can I go, make can I go rest. There is no unity. There is no government. We do not see Tinibu as a president. We do not accept him as a president. Every day he posts a post on Twitter. We, we, we camp in his Twitter and tell him, you are not our president. We do not, we did not vote for you. Make Twitter and social media unbearable for them. We have that number. We have that power. Those marching on the street, keep your match going on. Peacefully, uh, peacefully all bet. Do everything you can. Amplify your voices and let the judiciary understand that this generation, this our parents' generation, our generation, not our parents' generation, this generation has come to change this country for good. And I say this not like I trust the judiciary. No. But I trust the case we have before the judiciary. I am 100% certain of what we have before the judiciary that there is no how of all our prayers will, will, will escape all. There is no technicality. He can escape one or two. But you see, that trap that we set for that man, he must catch up. As long as we stay focused on what we're doing. So I'm saying this for you guys to understand that this journey you guys got into, no be sprint to, no be sprint to, na marathon. For many people waiting, saying a sprint, na 100 meters. Uh, after, uh, from uh, May 27th last year, we could also reach February. I thought it was like that too. May 27th will not come. They don't, May 25th, sorry, don't, uh, February 25th don't come. There's still our mandate. It's a continuous process. The process of taking back our country is a continuous process that we have to recharge ourselves, recharge our minds, give hope to ourselves, understand the times that we're in, that what we're about to destroy is a structure of criminality that has been enshrined in our country for close to 60-something years. You will not destroy that infrastructure in 10 months. Do not destroy that infrastructure in, in just one year. It's a process. And we are in that process. And in this season, and I say this all the time because many of us don't understand the power of times and seasons. In this season, in this season, we must take back our country or else what will happen will happen. And I'm saying this because for Nigerians to understand. In this season, when I say in this season, in this electoral season, because elections are not yet over, when election we we end is the day the Supreme Court will give the final verdict, of which probably when in Nigeria when he comes in, he will, in his submission he will give that time frame. I think he has done that breakdown before. When the final verdict will be held in the Supreme Court, our job going forward is to make sure we put pressure on that judiciary to delegitimize Tinubu. We don't know Tinubu. He's a criminal drug dealer. Every freaking day you're going on his page, you're making tweets. I did not vote Tinibu. Tinibu is a fucking criminal drug dealer. We are trending it every day. You you don't rule over people that don't want you to rule over them. You saw what happened in a, in, in a video clip yesterday when he entered somewhere and the man on the street was shouting, clap, 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 and there was nobody clapping. That is how it is. You cannot you, you cannot force leadership on people that don't want you to want to be led by you. So that is how we sustain this pressure on these guys, air, land, and sea. And before I yield the mic to my brother, well-meaning Nigeria, I want to just give a short story that well in Nigeria will come in. I'm sorry, N6 will come in. I think N6 has something. He will want to come in briefly, the well-meaning Nigeria. I want to tell you guys something. I told well-meaning well Nigeria reached out to me. Like, last week or four days ago, and he said, Saddam, you know that this PDP case, Nabu Buabi? And I said, Yes. I know say this PDP case, now Bobo. Make we don't give our people falsehood. So many of you would have remembered that on this space, we never talked about PDP's case. If you guys remember, 
We did not discuss, you never saw us talk about PDP's case on this space. We did not amplify it. We did not discuss about it because we knew the outcome before it started. But we understand the emotions of obedience. And we understand, we understood that we should not come out and say before judgment was passed. So we have come out and said, do not say it's because if you know we know you know say in Nigeria the good thing people now to do is that when they cannot do something, they find who to blame. It will not be violence based are the ones that say uh, the violence based gave uh, 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 the judiciary they what to do or what to say. We said no, let's calm down. In house we already knew. In house we already knew that that decision is going to be bald that dash because really PDP had no local standing on that case. They had none. If it had happened yesterday, if that if that judicial had happened yesterday, it was what, going to be it was going to be a travesty on, on 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 judgment, and that is now me telling you without any because when I told my, because my, 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 when I spoke about Amara Shah yesterday, she said I said about Amara some people are still she said no again for what I said that judgment have come I said judgment of what I say I said PDP case which PDP case I said uh, that she said ah uh, no black case with high court and uh, appeal court onto it. PDP no get it's, it's just like a man and a woman is fighting, and me and I can sue them, sue the man for beating his wife that they should divorce. It's not my business. If the wife cannot sue or the husband cannot sue, what is your business on that man's case? PDP had no business in that case, but because of emotions, many people are raised up in space. The judiciary is corrupt. The judiciary, I am not making point for the judiciary here or for people to understand me because many times I say that I'm supporting the judiciary. No. I'm saying this for you to understand that, that particular case yesterday with Supreme High Court, Supreme Court was a right decision. It was a right decision. So you see, when you take out your emotions and you face facts, you now see that, and you see, and you now see that, okay, okay, okay. And that same yesterday, judiciary made a judgment that we did not talk about. I said I'll talk about it today. Judiciary passed case for us, for Aburi. I did not see our people celebrating. The case that's of that our own case, our own case. Our people didn't celebrate it because the our media didn't case. carry it. They uh, didn't carry it like they carried our papa. Channels, the channels are invite Aburi to congratulate him. Media did not carry that our own case. Oh, they don't come and but talk about Parano our own Fox win. carried it. Thank you. They didn't come out and talk about our own win yesterday. That we had a case yesterday that we won. They didn't talk about it. But in all these things, I see say. Let everything be going on because it's still a domino effect for everybody. Because whatever judgment came, and why are you going to talk about other PDPK on Twitter? Was because I know that let it still get Nigerians angry. Because, yes, our judiciary is highly corrupt, it's a very corrupt part of the system that we are trying to change. It's a very, very corrupt part of that system we are trying to change. But in it, I'm not going to come out and say we don't have one or two good judges, one or two places. I will not come out and say that because it just it just like you don't come in a blanket statement and say the whole judiciary is corrupt, everybody's corrupt. No, I believe and I stand on it that there are one or two or three people that when we apply the right pressure on them, we will get judgment at the right time. So please, my people, as always on this platform, we are making people on the violence base understand on time for you to understand that whatever happened on May 29th is all one bit. It's all one bad party because on May 29th, democracy dies the moment they swear in a criminal, a criminal as a criminal that did not meet up the constitution as the president. Democracy has died. So just take it that democracy has died, and what they're celebrating is the death of democracy or one bad party. Then focus on the judiciary because we have a case on Tuesday. All our energy, energy, energy must be on the on that Tuesday case with our chest. We suppose they make sure that Tuesday case they begin to feel the anger of the nation. Please, because energy is very, very important as we move on. Energy, conservation of our energy, direction of our energy, it is important we focus where our focus is. Do not misdirect your energy, people. Our energy should be on the judiciary, sit on their freaking necks, expose them, call them out, speak about them, let them feel this heat. As I always say, we have the numbers. Thank you very much, my brothers and sisters. I think I'm just going to bring in... Um, is right now. S is my brother. If you want to take it away, please take it away from me. I think I've done a lot of talking and I will, will give the mic to Wellman Nigeria. Jimmy, thank you so much. Guys, thank you so much for always joining us. I just feel like um, 
we will bring this break. And hopefully tomorrow, I said our space. I was meant to schedule the space. Um, uh, our space will be to be uh, to happening tomorrow by God's grace will be uh happening on the parallel facts handle. So if you're not following the parallel facts handle, you're on the long thing. Hopefully tomorrow you join. Um, uh, we have a, a very robust conversation with our principal tomorrow. A very uh hard to have conversation with him tomorrow. So. Get in, um, get go for the prior facts. Subscribe to us. I'm going to be putting up our YouTube handle. Subscribe on YouTube so that all your papa, your mama, your sister, your brother, sister in diaspora across the nation that don't know how to use Twitter, they can join up on that conversation on YouTube tomorrow also. So, guys, thank you so much to every one of you on the platform. We appreciate every one of you. Thank you for always sticking with us here. It's always a pleasure having you guys on this platform. And I yield the mic to my brother NCs right now. NCs, good evening. How are you doing today, bro? Good evening, Saddam. I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Congratulations, obedience. It's been a hard-fought battle. We didn't have a structure. We started out as three people tweeting in a room. I remember Festus Kayamo. We made him eat humble pie. We would not win one polling unit. Nothing that they didn't say about this movement. But look at where we are today. We open a Twitter space and we get nothing less than 1,400, 2,000 people, 4,000 people. And this is without Peter B himself. And these are just even random N6, Saddam, or Tumba. Talk less of when the big names in this platform open spaces. You know, it's such a beautiful movement. I want to remind you people, when the Anna polls came up, Bola Metinubu ranked number one candidate amongst illiterates and poverty-stricken Nigerians. It was an indices I pointed out at that period because I said this particularly changes the entire dynamic of how this fight will go and even the type of enemies we should expect to meet along the way. And it has been true. It has been factual. I have never seen the handle of any obedience under the word giveaway. But I've seen the handles of thousands. It is a proven fact that at least 75% or 80% of our Bado people on this platform have begged for money at some point or the other in the last eight years. So I ask again, you see them praying, Nigeria will favor me on that Tinubu. And you see, it's part of those wicked, evil, and downright demonic prayers that we pray in Nigeria, even though we Oh, is Nigeria will favor me. Let me explain to you. Nigeria favored me under Buhari. I am alive today, and I have seen the end of his tenure. So Nigeria favored me. Buhari no fi me, and I no die. So I take this because, why am I saying this? Always give yourself succor in this movement. Always remind yourself why you came into this movement. Always tell yourself the truth about the candidate so that you don't shake. Saddam brought up that video. And I want to say this as well. If you have noticed anything in the Nigerian... ...nemesis seem to be working over time in this country. A presidential candidate... An INEX selected candidate was being shown around Asurok. And a picture, a video came out with of him clearly about to fall after taking maybe two, three steps. You need to hold table. On your mandate, we shall stand. Mandate, they use table, holding self. I want to remind you. That if you are in this movement, just because Peter B is good looking and he's healthy and he's agile, it is allowed. Because if you see this charade of a candidate that APC 
has put out there. I beat my chest and tell you that APC people, they know they are deceiving themselves. They know that they came to the market with a bad product. But like I said, they've turned this election to spotty bets. It is now Man U versus Arsenal. And it's now we must win, even though the ref gave us a fake penalty. Nobody is looking that we are coming from one sick man to an equally sick man. And I always like to remind you people, in Kashim Shetima's own words, Tinubu is healthier than me. I'm still telling you people that the way Kashim Shetima disappeared since this election, he said he's treating hypertension, high blood pressure. For Kashim Shetima to say Tinubu is healthier than me, God knows the people APC has put in Asso Rock. God knows the people they've rigged, snatched, and grabbed and placed in Asso Rock. I also remind you, if you're in this movement because Peter B is good, uh, Peter B is intelligent, he's smart, and you believe he'll move Nigeria forward. That is also allowed. Let me also remind you that Bola Ahmed Tinubu did not go for one debates. He owns a TV station. He owns a radio station. He owns a newspaper. But for 11 months of campaigns, he did not go for one debate. Either on his show, on Kadaria Ahmed, with channels, or with Rufai. Please, bear this in mind. So that when APC is telling you that they will move Nigeria forward, and that bleached whale, Better Edu, comes out to say, Tinubu has a 60-day plan for Nigeria. I have seen it. Why didn't he come out to tell us during the campaigns? You cannot give what you don't have. The man that was going around answering every single question down to the question of how did he buy his house in Europe, in the UK. There was a story that came out of how Tinubu's son bought his own house in the UK. Did they ever defend that story? No. I just want to remind you where you are coming from. Congratulations. Because if you are an obedient, it clearly shows that you are one of those Nigerians that can stand on the side of good over evil when it is placed before you without coercion. When a generation where there are people with a job that did not exist five years ago called influencers, because people actually don't think anymore and need people to influence their thinking, to outsource their thinking for them. You saw three candidates and you made your choice without being influenced. I congratulate you. Let me remind you that we are in court. Let me remind you if you're losing hope, you're losing your energy, that Bola Ahmed Tinubu went to Oshun State and told the people of Oshun State, I am richer than Oshun State. From what we hear, Oyetola is his cousin, his nephew, whatever. He rigged his nephew into the governorship of Oshun State. Adeleke went to court under PDP, fought the case in court, and today, Adeleke is governor of Oshun State. Before God, before man, before the waters, before the sky, before the earth. Adeleke is governor of Oshun State. If Tinubu was as powerful as he claims he is, Oshun State would have been a good example of what will happen if they remove his anointed son from governance. Where were the Agberos in Oshun State? I felt he would he would send the cabal, they would fight, hey, they would shoot out. Oyetola would be governor today. Where, where has he not left governor of Oshun? Has he, Oyetola not left? And you see, when the righteous are in power, the people rejoice. You saw the videos of civil servants in Oshun State dancing for joy. That is how we will dance when Peter B wins. I trust Peter B. 
Enter will be fit, no go win election, begin to concert. When Nigeria is burning, you go do concert, pack 15 artists, make them they do as he they sweet us, he they pain them. Who is they sweet? Who is they pain? There's a video of Kadaria Ahmed, Kadaria Ahmed crying her eyes out because bandits affected her, uh, 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 raped or, or, or killed a family member. Rest in peace. He touched everybody. There's enough tyranny to go around. And as for me and my house in the house of obedience, we have the blood of the lamb over our lentil. Evil will forever pass over our house. I don't know what anybody feels. Evil will forever pass over the house of every obedience. So anything I won't do. I've told Baptist, I hope you are Shetima's. Because you people really just put Shetima's placeholder in power. I'm sure Shetima will be wondering, what kind of luck is this? If Shetima is patient enough, he can actually access what I call the good luck anointing. Because it's clearly looking like the same situation all over again. As an APC man, when you saw that video yesterday of Bola Ahmed Tinubu staggering, did you look at that video and say, ah, this old man needs rest. Oh, Nigeria deserves better. We cannot be coming from Buhari and doing this. Did you tell yourself that there are more people stronger, smarter, and more qualified in the APC that this man can play political godfather to and be directing on what to do rather than this embarrassment? Did you tell yourself that if this man is staggering this one and he's able to hold himself in Nassau Rock, if they will no day for United Nations building, no be Yakata be that. No be mandates, don't they grant be that. As an APC person, do you look at this and go home and look at your grandparents, your elderly parents, and say, damn, I, I wouldn't do this to my father. But you want them to do this to Nigeria. Does that man look like somebody that can do nine to five? Does he look like someone that can do 5 a.m. to we come on this space three times a week, 4 p.m to 2 a.m. This space will end at least 2 a.m. Can Tinubu host a space from 4 p.m. to 2 a.m.? Can he sit in meetings, deliberating, listening to thousands of contributions and ideas, holistically assessing them together while giving an assessment for the over this life of 220 million people that are coming off an administration that put them in 77 trillion naira debts? Person will never get himself. You, Supreme Court judge, you looked at that video yesterday. Then you looked at the video of Peter Obi in Portaco today, collecting award with Wiki that is looking like someone cancer started affecting the day election ended. And you see that agile man that went from Italy to France to Dele Momodu's house, to Supreme Court in the morning, and you tell yourself, no, it's mandate that is needing table just to take two steps. Bah, bah. It, okay, I ask you, Nigerians, if that video is the best from that Asu Rock tour they put out, are you sure it was not stretched? They were using to carry Tinubu around the whole tour. Then when that place for video came, they just stood him up. And in that three seconds, in the, because if that is the video that the state house, Bashiru Ahmed, King Femi, all of them can approve to put out, God knows what the remaining video looks like. God knows. This one now, we, are, we were talking of his working in italics. This one now is working in board mass. This, he's working in brackets of division minus addition subtraction. I don't know where we are now. Even Pablo Escobar chased power in his, in, in his prime. This thing is no more funny. It is no more funny. I repeat, we never trusted the judiciary from day one. If you trusted them, it'd be like saying you never get court case for Nigeria before. We never trusted them. But this movie must be followed to the end. I always let, take you back to Oshun State. If Adeleke had harnessed his thugs and caused a protest and shut down Oshun before the judiciary had given him his mandate, 
Oyetola could have arrested him for treason, and Adelike could be in prison today instead of being the governor. Please understand how to watch a movie complete. Nigerians are the kind of people, they, they won't know whether the actor died or whether he killed. So they'll fast forward to the end of the film, watch the end, then start it from the beginning so that they know what to expect. But this is real life. Let the judiciary play their game complete and let us see the end credits so that when we get up as a people to protest, the U.S. that sent delegates for the inauguration, they will not even be able to tell you shit because you ask them, you bastard, shit, this person was he not, con was he not convicted in your country? Nigerians, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I love this movement. You people make me proud. Agbado cannot host space. Imagine a space where Kudus will contribute. Uh, uh, Mr. Ibu will contribute. Was Papin will contribute. Ada Anambra will contribute. You just imagine as that space one B. Just as you just imagine as a one B. Then that uh, pastor that looks like they use tractor tire to climb his skull. Just imagine as that space one B. That's why they can't. I sent a jury in Gelali a text. I said, A jury, every day you go around telling people what do I have done. Yes. You say, you say, wait until the pastor here, I beg. <laughs> you feel like I'm putting air for ground, can't use tractor tire, climb the head, but in head strong, so the head no grip bust. So the head just rumple. You understand? I sent a jury a text. I said, You are in power for eight years. Every Day you come on newspaper, you come on television talking, you come on newspaper, you come on television talking about Buhari, 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 Buhari. On Shokoloko Bango Shea Street, people with the Shokoloko Bango Shea Street will go and check the road. A jury blocked me, but I'm here and we've been hosting spaces for 11 months on a man that left government. Of almost a decade ago, character, competence, and capacity. Festus Keyamo got up today and told you people that he has been collecting salary in a redundant ministerial role. She, I don't they hear the shout since say, how can a minister of unemployment be unemployed on Twitter? Person we're supposed to give employment, they Twitter, like person where they're unemployed. Is Festoski? I'm going to refund the salary. And these are the type of animals that are in the APC. So I want to remind you that you are doing well. Imagine this election without Peter Obi. I would, I promise you, I might have jackpot by now. Waiting concern me concern Nigeria. Maybe on the day of election, I for don't can if I one sweet girl day for house, they call her massage. I don't go lie to you now. What time for they do? I go to watch Netflix. Or oh, through through I feel they tap soccer for my streets because the new street where they stay, the street wide where where then they play football for men on Sunday morning. I for those they tap soccer, true, true. But now me carry Koboko go my street, they pursue you to that that morning. Anybody will play football for you. I go, I go fuck you. I talk I'm I do I'm now. Without Peter I'll be in this election. Where we, 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 we think on Sa Saddam would have been one of my guys I knew from Cubana and UNN days. I'll never have known Jimmy. Maybe Jimmy would have probably blocked me. If I don't tweet something, I go tell and say, who's this guy? Go don't block me. Swear for me in Yoruba. I'll never have known well-meaning Nigerian. His handle will probably never have needed to be well-meaning Nigerian. You know, Twitter spaces will be about man and woman who should pay on a date. You know, for just days, normal Johnson, Afro, Whiskey David, who is better all those kind of things. Now they're 30 BG FC. Now they'll be for just day. They go do their election. We go just the year this person went to court. It could just be like, you know, as the way 2019 court be, there was a server. There was no server. Remember that other server, server BMC. In 2019, what's in about electoral process? Why well, no no now?
has helped perpetuate our local government. But they, they, they are shouting about their own Yoruba brother that wanted to be governor. It's just a matter of time. A dog is going through what Peter B is going through. From what I'm hearing, Badi Boros Bible might even have a petition at the Supreme Court. So this one year anniversary, I want you to beat your chest. Baba, you did it. Even you, you come on this space, you have never spoken of violence space before, but you shall burn your data because you love Nigeria. And you are willing to hear intelligent discussions about Nigeria, even if it's not from your political party. For the rare 0.0001% of APC and PDP members that still have sense. Because I know you people, you are an endangered species. You are, you are more precious than dinosaur fossils right now. Intelligent people in APC. You are very rare. Uh, you know, the problem is if you see 20 snakes coming, you can't start telling yourself which one is the one that is non-poisonous. You will first run. That's just the only problem. But for those of you who come here to listen to discussions about Nigeria, I commend you. I commend you. So, the APC Owambe Party, the APC Titipo, the APC Block Party, Mainland Block Party, Island Block Party, APC Block Party, the APC concerts, renewed hopelessness, uh, APC Lache Beach, the APC rave, the APC all boy all girls party, the APC frat party, anything they want to do that day and carry book and I don't even know Tinubu that couldn't carry flag. I don't know how he will carry his hand and put on that book. Maybe Shatima will lift his hand for him. Una go see movie that day. Una go see movie that day. She, you will sit down throughout that whole proceedings. I also want to ask you people, do you remember that the president of Nigeria and the vice president of Nigeria is meant to declare their assets upon being inaugurated as president? Tinubu be like, who go declare assets? That has no work, no company, nothing he has built. Which assets? I'm, I'm interested in hearing Tinubu's assets. Abi Inugodo asset declaration. I'm asking you people, children of God in this auditorium. So there's so much interesting things that he doesn't even understand that will still happen. And then if they don't do asset declaration, it's another travesty on democracy. At least Buhari told us for 20 years, his, his cows were gay, so they didn't reproduce. 100 cows in 1993, 100 cows in 2013. We are going to hear asset declaration. I'm ready to hear his assets. How many cars, how much in his bank account, how many houses he has. I would love to hear his assets. We're going to have... Pardon me. So like I said, I want to congratulate you. Whatever brought you to this movement, what I remember Hanatu used to gush over her crush on Peter. If you are in this movement just because you have a crush on Peter Obi, it is absolutely fine. But please remember, we are in court and we will get back our mandates. I saw that video yesterday of Tinubu. If you look at Buhari's face in that video, if you look at Buhari's face in that video, you will know that Ebelebe Ebo. You will know that. Even Buhari knows that. On, I believe Tinubu has his sex tape. Because that is the only thing that can make Buhari carry this country. Buhari that I thought I knew. I hand over to this man. But until then. Because we have seen, I remember I tell you people, Ojus or Kalu took Theophilus Oji to a shrine where Theophilus Oji swore naked. That he will, he will give Oju Zokalu the whole of Abia State, anything he won't take. And the pictures are on the internet. Google this thing. Abia State governor swears enshrined naked. It's there. 
So don't be shocked if there is a picture of Buhari naked where he swore to be president of Nigeria. Don't be shocked. If you are doubting me, Google, I only speak with facts. If a governor needed to swear naked in a shrine to the governor who was a predecessor before him, that he would be corrupt, and, this, and truthfully he was corrupt, and it was when he stopped being corrupt that the governor before him leaked those pictures to the press. And you can still Google those pictures till today. How do you believe that a president of Nigeria fought, fought, withdrew all the currency, withdrew this one, put off two first casting, fought this man to be president, then somehow at the end of the day just handed the whole thing to him. You don't believe there's a picture of Barry somewhere swearing to be loyal, faithful, and honest. It happened in Abia. S is, S is, S is. You know, if you go, to, if you go to this rabbit hole now, we, we will. I have my own theory, of which I shared with you. No, you know, Allah. Of which I I'm just, my I'm just congratulating factor. obedience because, oh, because you have seen even within Labour Party, the beauty of light is when light is shone in the darkness, the roaches scatter. Peter B came into Labour Party. Labour Party has been comporting themselves. But if you know Labour Party before, person get up for Labour Party, say, I'm a Labour Party chairman, then defa, I'm promoting car, you know, take. If you know Labour Party before, I expected, I even expect, expected another whole candidate to get up and say he's the presidential candidate of Labour Party and Peter B just won election for him. Not in what I know they expect from Labour. Other parties used to put candidates in labor to go and spoil election. But Peter B entered labor all of a sudden. Labor Party don't, don't they comport? Labor Party don't they be like the party of the future? People, people don't they go, they come collect Labor Party card. Wahoo! That is the beauty of light. Meanwhile, another man entered another party, entered APC, and APC became more tribalistic, more evil, more ratchet more daft where is the enlightenment in their discussions where is the enlightenment in their discussions so like i said i just want to congratulate you people sometimes if you feel bad about this movement google lady margaret will be just google that sweet girl and remind yourself why you are here. Today, Buari's wife was saying, first ladies deserve their own package. If not, the, if not her kind first lady, first lady where they arrest students because they say she has added weight on Twitter, she go carry DSS, arrest students, no be that kind first lady, I beg. We want first lady that is a fashion icon. If not, then Margaret will be kind first lady. I can agree that office of the first lady can have life pension and gratuity. Essence, can you point to me anything, any project this woman did in eight years? Arresting Nigerian youth for calling her fat online. Okay, thank you. Yes, now. Is that not the last thing she was Googled for? Arresting Nigerian youth for calling her fat or for saying she had added weight online. That was it. That means if they made her president and wrote her name on a on a goat and carried it or put her name in coffin, she will missile she will missile one local government. She will missile an entire local government. You send DSS to go and pick a student because he came online and said, Ah, now well, this is our first lady done the hard way to in house. Okay. No wahala. Maybe not that kind of first lady when he would abasi the cook, she go go visit he would abasi. You people do, you know, we just we just faff around. Tinubu will be very interesting to see working at United Nations. Chair no day there, table no day there. Someone that was sleeping in meeting with show a small meeting, he don't sleep. No be show a snap picture, show us where they sleep for meeting. We're in trouble, though. We're in trouble. Dear Supreme Court, the ball is in your court. Because me personally. Where me, I will call for protest with my chest. It's after the Supreme Court has done their final ruling. Because you cannot tell me that somebody who wrote primary school, secondary school in 1999 and 2003, somehow did not write primary school, secondary school in his form in 2023, and INEC 
just somehow did not see it. No, not the wine. No, not the wine on herself. Not me. One more time. It's one year in this movement. I congratulate you. I love you all. You're a brand new family to me. I know that one day, one day, one day, we'll all gather together and hang out. Either it's our inauguration or our 100 days in office or our second tenure, something. And God will do it. We will go beyond Twitter space and have a proper obedient hangout and meet each other physically. I love you all. You mean the world to me. We had one million man matches in every state of this country and we all organized it ourselves. So the judiciary should know that if we do one million man match protest in every state of this country and organize it ourselves, they don't want to see that Nigeria. Let me also remind you people in APC, you did not get young people you will rigged yourself into power. I also want to remind you, mathematically, if you did get 8 million votes and 24 million people voted, there are... And if you share today, there are three people you will have to fight before you face the other person's three people. Let me just remind you, 8 million votes out of 24 million, if that is really your number. And if you are rigged below that number, and Peter will be an obedience, are more than you people, and truthfully, maybe obedience are like 12 million, and you people are 3 million. I promise you that violence, this ginger, this gragra you people are doing, you really don't want it. You really don't want it. Numbers have no emotions. Obedience, I love you all. Hashtag Nigerians did not vote Tinubu. Let them host their wambe. The people that want to hang his picture in the uh, lobby, that one concerned them. As far as I'm concerned, Nigeria has no president and we are in court. It's important, it's important we understand where we are coming from and where we are going to. My people, thank you for joining us on the platform. All the latecomers that came late, we always on this platform. Please pay your tithes and your offerings real quick by retweeting and sharing the space so other people can join us on this conversation and understand what we're discussing, why we are saying today is a very special day in this movement. So in the midst of all your and our and there is only one way we can reclaim back our mandate. There is only one way. Any person that tells you that there's another way is a judiciary. So they understand that this generation, we must, it's only two ways for me you have said it. Either you give us, we either give us back our mandate or we restart the country. That's just how I see it. But let me come bring in well in Nigeria. Uh, then Jimmy, Jimoski, man, we're working in tandem with spiritual you. You see what I said in the DM, exactly what I was thinking, man. Thank you very much, my brother. I think we're going to go on, we're going to go on that, that cruise. But let me bring in well in Nigeria, then I'll we'll come to you, Jimmy. Then I have seen so many wonderful comments. Guys, if you want to join this conversation, probably you're not comfortable with what we're saying. You have a different opinion. You think there's something that we should be doing. It, whatever you think, please don't tell me what you think we should be doing. Sorry, please what you are doing. Tell us what you are doing. I'm so, so happy that lady that came up here last time in the space and she was telling, she, said, she reached out to me and said, Saddam, I'm going to go and join the protest of Abuja and I sent her contact to where you go to. So I want to know what you are doing, what you are doing because to get back our money, let us know what you are doing also. It is important we all know where we are, what we are doing. It's very, very, very important. So thank you very much. Well, I'm going to bring the conversation. Yeah. Remember our chat. <laughs> Three days ago. <laughs> I've been there four days ago, but God, my brother, good yeah, evening. Good, good evening, violence. Uh, the extreme members of the violence space, church, mosque, and shrine, good evening, Emir Saddam. Good evening, that NC, so you don't hear about. Good evening, Jimmy. Good evening, Big Mark. Good evening, like everybody. I mean, a lot of people. I know Jimmy will come through with the, with the, with the introduction, so let me not call people's name. Um, today is a special day. I personally, for me personally, I, I consider today the, the the remaining important day in this month for me. That's, I mean, okay, maybe on the 30th, maybe another, but I mean, for, for a day that is worth celebrating, I think this, today, after today, I don't think there's any other day worth celebrating this month. Next, next is to go to the battle. Um, you know, Saddam did like some timeline movement. If you know me, I'm like, I'm like a chronological guy. I, I, I see things in order of time, in order of the way it happened. 
No, even even myself, when I try to remember where we are coming from, I I can I used to miss many things. So I end up, you know, right like remembering some later on. So I really want people to understand. On this day, sometime last year, uh 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 president elect, my own president elect, uh president Peter Obi left he, 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 he didn't leave PDP on this day, but you know, he had left PDP, I think, about two days before. And um arrived at Labour Party on this day last year. I'm not going to lie, my first reaction, so before then, and, and I want to take people through my personal journey, because the, the motive of my, of this, my submission, is for people to know where we are coming from, because maybe you need some kind of reminder. I know some, not everybody joined the movement. I know people who joined the movement way before me, like people got tapped the current way before me, and I know people tapped it after me. So irrespective of where you tapped into the current, you are Welcome. If you like, even if even if it's on the on the twenty fourth of February, a day to the election that you killed in, you are as obedient as any obedient. So I, I want to put that out there. So my first reaction with Peter will be when I heard, I got to the office, I got to the office, um, and my colleagues said, Oh, Peter will be had moved to the Labour Party. I was like, What? What is he doing in the Labour Party? So I'm not going to come here and fake to you and say, Ah, I believed so much that Peter I will be lying to you. I was like, what? I was so angry because, you know, I was one of those people that felt like, oh, I mean, if you can have Peter, I'll be moving for articles, useless. You know, I wanted to fall for that same Osiba and all scam. And I was like, okay. No, I was so pissed. I was like, I mean, I went on and on ranting and ranting because I personally just liked Peter Abi from the 2019 election. And one thing, that one reason why I so much believe the time is now, I tell people that I don't know Peter Abi so closely before maybe 2019 election. But I actually think the Peter Obi that we see now is being led by something beyond the physical. I don't, I don't want to go spiritual or religious. But I, I shall know that something that is only this current Peter Obi that we are seeing is beyond what all our eyes can see. That's one thing I can show. You know, I reacted and, you know, I, I moved on at that point. I think at that point, of course, at that point, uh, APC had not done their primaries. And some weeks later, they did their primaries. And... I was like, ah, oh, more, which can we all have So I was so pissed because, of course, I was one of those. I also think, oh, maybe if APC had chosen Osiba and John, maybe we would have just had the choice of, ah, even if he bad, you know, go come too bad, right? You get, so I, I was like, okay. And I, and I feel like Peter, Peter will be shared that sentiment. He said it at Daily Momodu's, uh, Daily Momodu's birthday the other day, that why did he pity, why did APC just feed Osiba and John? At least, let's know that, I mean, I mean, we have like, and option B, even if it's a bad option B, we shall have option B. And we, we we went on, and you know, one of the first Peter B's interview I listened to was the Peter was the interview at Break It a Family, and I listened to that interview, and I was like, I was so moved. Then some days later, I listened to Peter B. Some I don't know if a lot of people know this. Rufai Rufai of Arise TV interviewed Peter B. I think it was the, I don't know if it's his personal radio station, but I think it was Voice of the People. That was the name of that video station, interviewed Peter B. And I listened to Peter B in that interview. And I resolved within myself. I said, no, I don't, I mean, I don't really care if this man is going to win or not. I don't care. But even if, if this man is going to get one supporter, it's just going to be me. I don't, I, I'm not interested now. You know, we, we have been so roped in Nigeria into this mindset of, oh, let's support who looks like he will win, which is the biggest mistake a lot of people make a lot of time. Let's support who looks like it, whether it's wrong or not. We, 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 we like to just feel like we were right. Even if our attempt to be right is to our own detriment, right? We, we just like to feel like we were, we were right. I'm like, okay, it's fine. I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to feel like I was right. I want to feel like I supported the right person. And that's what I told myself. And we went on. And, you know, fast forward for people, I'll just run through some timeline. You know, PDP eventually did their primaries. For those of you that may remember, Wiki came up insulting Peter Obi, called him a coward. And I was like, okay, it's all good. APC did their primaries. For those of you that can remember, the DJ kept playing, collect your money, wake up at the beginning. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And for those of you that may remember some of the some of the activities that followed APC's primary, as a confused party, their chairman had attempted to announce Ahmed Lawan as their presidential candidate. But fast forward, we moved on. Then, for those of you that can't remember, Peter Abi eventually traveled to Egypt and, you know, a couple of countries. And so everybody was like, what is he doing in Egypt? Blah, 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 blah. 
And this man went to understudy the Egyptian ele electrical uh, 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 power sector, basically. They say it's meant to be Oshu elections. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> say it's meant, it's meant, it's meant like Oshu campaigning. That, that, <laughs> well, suppose why would you be in, uh, why would you be in Egypt when uh, Oshu... It was Oshu or Ekiti or someone state doing governorship election. <laughs> no, Oshu. <laughs> and we say, oh, and I said, oh, okay, we moved on. Then, of course, within that time, Bola Tinubu disappeared like he has always been doing. So, like I said, one just now, it's crazy. Within the temporary time that Bola Tinubu will be president, I see it as temporary. There's no way, there's no way Bola Tinubu can be a permanent president. Like Saddam said, there are only, for me, I, I said it, there are only two ways to this ending. Is that the judiciary gives the mandate or we are left to just take Nigeria by ourselves? It may not happen immediately, but it will surely happen. That's just a given. So let's just forget all the side. And you know, Bola Tinubu disappeared literally disappeared. Then after you moving forward, then all of a sudden there was the talk of vice presidential candidates. For those of you that can remember, there was the talk of oh Kwan Kwa. So who will be Peter Obis vice presidential candidate? Who will be this? Well, we got Ahmed. Um but that's it, Baba Ahmed. And we're like, okay, it's all good. Then for those of you that can also remember, we came to a point where APC decided wanted to choose their their vice presidential candidate which eventually led to the double nomination, which we are in now. And, you know, there was a lot of Shavid. Who are they going to pick? I don't want to talk about PDP. So PDP is annoying. Who are they going to pick? Of course, they, they were already in a fix. They had a Muslim, um, Southern presidential candidate. So it was a fix. And eventually they picked, they picked um, Shetima. For those of you that can also remember, that was the day of the fake bishops. It was crazy. Why... That fake bishop story was crazy, was that the person that would expose it was actually Shetima. Shetima came out and said, as you can see, we have 30 fake bishops. We have 30 bishops. And I was like, bro, I don't understand. We sat down and counted the bishop. Apparently, they had budgeted money for 30 bishops, so he knew there were 30. Uh, so that was not his problem, but it's all good. And we moved on, then the campaign started. And why, you know, Peter Obi was giving us things like, do not vote for me because I'm an Igbo man. Do not vote for me because I'm a Christian. Paul Atinubu kept on giving us things like Bala Blue, Bulaba. Why Peter Abu was giving us things that we unite Nigeria? And just to add, I saw Peter Abu earlier today in sitting in the mosque and, you know, joining um, our Muslim brother in a, brothers in a wedding. I was like, good. That's the kind of... As someone that is comfortable everywhere he goes, whether it be in the mosque, whether in the church, anywhere he goes. And while Peter Abu was busy uniting Nigeria, um, the likes of Atiku felt like it was the time to break Nigeria. Tinubu also thought the same way. While Peter Abu was telling us to support him because of his compassion, capacity, competence, character. But Tinubu was telling us things like potential. Uh, they couldn't even make a down payment for a roasted corn. And uh, Abado and things like church rats and Holy Communion, which I, I really cannot understand how all those things comes to, comes together. Then Peter Abi, there's one thing about Peter Abi, and it, it has been his consistency, and I know Saddam may be playing some sound bites from Peter Abi throughout the space, is his consist consistency. Then we moved on from that, and there was the attack on Peter Abi's personality. So, you know, for those of us that may not be aware, there was a time they were trying to attack his personality. They say, oh, all these figures that he's calling is a lie. Peter Abi will say, the size of social thing is 9.5. 55C7. Five, five, Somebody will say, no, it's not true. It's 9.557. Five, five, they will approximate the six and say, it's, it's not true. And I remember one of the first things that trended was the lies of Peter Obi. I was like, ah, do you know Peter Obi brought the concept of fact-checking to the Nigerian media? He brought it. Before now, Nigerian media, everybody will come, say, lie, talk everything they want to say. But because of Peter Obi, fact-checking came into the Nigerian media circle. And it's so crazy. But one of the things that attracted me the most, the most to Peter Obi and I feel like it's the most underrated feature of this man, is the fact that, I mean, some space back, we, we talked about the pensions that governors receive. But some of us don't know, or some of us know, but we just underrate what it means. That Peter Obi has not received pension, he has not received a dime from Anambra State since 2014 when he left governorship. He has not received a dime. And I'm saying, and I'm emphasizing this because even the best of our governors, the best of them, the donor dukes of this world. And I'm sure people like, what's it called? Your state governor. We resign and we'll be collecting pension. So the best of our governors collect pension. So even collecting pension was not supposed to be a bad thing. But Peter B appealed to his moral and said, no, I will not collect this pension. 
and people need to and, and and you know i'm saying all this so that people know that know what we are fighting for i know that we really need to fight till the very end we really need to fight it of course there were so many attack and peter Abish's response kept being if you have one thing against me prove it and i will step down if you have one thing against me prove it and i will step down until today he's still saying it and nobody has proven him wrong you know the campaign continued and um i'll just you know go, go, go very fast the campaign continued and of course bulletin would not appear in any debate but peter will be appeared wherever he was called. Even AY called Peter Abi. Peter Abi answered. Peter Abi went everywhere in this country. Everywhere. Did all. He went through the 36 states and the FCT. He went through all of them in Nigeria. In fact, in some states, he went there twice and probably three. In fact, some other states were becoming jealous. That, ah, Peter Abi went to this state twice. He only came to our state once, but Peter Abi went everywhere at least once. The 36 states and the FCT. And after all said and done, Peter will be with the support of the obedience, with the support of every one of us, won the election clean, clear. But, you know, political rascals thought, oh, we can steal it from these guys. But for me, like I've said, it's a no. They can't steal it. So, I am, I am of the stand that we must and we will collect our mandate back, irrespective of what happened May 29th. In fact, I, I just I laugh at APC because May 29th is probably the best day they will ever get going forward. So I hope they celebrate it very well because it's probably the best day they will ever get. I am resolved, and I hope everybody is, to make sure that every day we emphasize the fact that Bola Tinubu is an illegitimate president, that is a drug dealer, that is a perjurer, he is a fake, fake for certificate forger, he is, he, as in, every day, every day, I will make sure he's reminded. That is my, that is my, that pressure. In, everybody needs to know that he's an illegitimate president. So it is not, that's where our role comes in. And, and just to round off, like Saddam had said earlier, our next court day is 30th of this month. It's on Tuesday, a day after all this, their own and their party, if they, if they won't hold, because I, I don't really care what happens again. A day after that day. 30th is our first court day. And from what we've gathered, it's going to hold for three weeks straight first, as in for petitioners. Three weeks straight, including Saturdays. So I'm telling us, Nigerians, let's brace ourselves for impact. There will be days where you will hear things from the court that, ah, go be like, say, everyone for. There will be other days where it will look good. But brace yourself for impact. For me, for me, I have resolved, and I really wish everybody would resolve, that we will keep pushing, keep pushing, Keep pushing until the judiciary does the right thing. And even if they um, and if we get to that point and they decide not to do it, eh, eh, we will now know that it's over to Nigeria. Dati Baba Ahmed said it. He said judiciary is not the last hope of the common man. The last hope of the common man is the common man. So judiciary may be just be the may just be the first to the last. That's what in Nigeria parlance we call it second to the last hope of the common man. Maybe and if judiciary decides not to do the right thing, then we will now know. I want to know, I don't know about you, I want to know that, okay, presidency could not give us what we, our country back. INE could not give us our country back. Judiciary now don't want to give us our country back. Uh -huh. Let's just take our country back. But I would like to get to that point. So I really want to beg everybody that let's get ready. Coming out online, offline, we continue throughout the court case. We are going to be in the court every day, not even just... On Monday, every day. After Monday, we will go to court every day. As many of us that can make it there, let's make sure that we go there. And lastly, um, you know, Saddam was making reference to something that we said. Let me just tell you guys. I think Saddam already explained it. The truth is, and maybe subsequently in this place we might talk about it further. I, I, to be honest, PDP's case yesterday, I not put mine. But it's just that, you know, the way some of us are sometimes, I didn't want to be the bearer of that off. You know, if some people have developed hope for something, I don't want to be that person to come and tell you, don't develop hope on it. It's, 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 no, it's not true. It's a charade. We saw the judgment today. At least we've seen what they wrote. And they say that what they see before them is this and that. Uh, this one is before that one. And, and to be honest, like Saddam said, if we go by what the judgment was today, they were right. If we go by what the judgment they wrote there. So it is now also left to Peter Abyss legal team 
to also go and prove their case at the tribunal. Of course, this may be a cheap point for APC's lawyer to use to say, did it, but the judges at the tribunal will use the evidence before them. They will not use the evidence that was presented to the Supreme Court. They may take that as, oh, as a case. APC lawyers will use it, but the judge at the tribunal will use what the evidence presented before them by Peter will be. And meanwhile, I just want to announce to us again that tomorrow, Peter will be, will be on Parallel Fact. I'm so excited about that. If you've not followed Parallel Fact on Twitter or the social media, because the truth is that you might not get space tomorrow. So guys, please, let's follow Parallel Fact. So thanks to everybody. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. Sarah, move over to you. I'm sure you want to go with Jimmy for take speakers. Thank you very much, my brother. Well, in Nigeria, well spoken. Thank you very much, um, guys. Our conversation is on, as we say all the time. I posted on the Jumbo Throne. Please, um, schedule our space tomorrow with Peter Obi. Peter Obi will be live on the Parallel Facts, uh, tomorrow. So if you're not following the Parallel Facts, you're in for a very long team space. Auditorium go full, low. Auditorium go full. So it's important if you follow Parallel Facts on time. And yeah, I was also streaming that space. I just posted it on the Jumbo Show right now, our YouTube channel that will be streaming. So everybody on the platform, please subscribe to our YouTube channel to get live notifications in case you cannot join from Twitter. You get live notifications. And to all your family, friends, relatives that will be asking, you want to hear from the people's president. People have been asking me, um, Saddam, we need to talk to Peter. Yeah, we need to hear from Peter. We need to hear from Peter. And you guys, you were here. No, no, I don't want to act like a bad guy. I did not do anything, no. I did not do anything. It was a miracle. The miracle fell on us on the platform last night. We were all here. But when Aisha came and spoke, and as she dropped speaking, our guy, our president called her, and president asked her, how far are you doing? Where are you now? And she now said, ah, I'm in one place that they're talking about you. One space. And he said, he did not invite me. And he offered to come to speak to obedience. And she had to tell him what, because so many obedience have been wanting to hear from the man, and I say this because uh, it's important we understand that while we are feeling whatever we are feeling, understand that the man that the cap is on his head, imagine what he's feeling. He's feeling, he ha he's feeling times a million times the emotions you have, a million times it. Because he has invested more, his time, his energy, his resources, his image. On a very normal day, people being a dang with their mate or $10 they mate, that in class of friends with that. Now he paid the degree of friends with that, but he brought that himself and let him run for this team. And since then, freaking criminals, no, no do well animals, children of the roasted corn, political bandits and political terrorists have the guts and effort to come out and say things about this man. I get so angry and I see people that on a very normal day, they're not worthy of washing his cars, his tires of the man's car. But the man has brought down himself to the level that make I run, make I make I enjoy work for my people. People like people, I don't I don't even dignify to call their names. They don't have the guts to say nonsense about Peter. Because the man brought himself down 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 down. Peter is supposed to, he's so rich that by now he's supposed to say, Can all the family go 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 on island? Go Aruba. Just go Aruba or Dominican Island. Go and chill for the rest of his life. I'm not fucking care about this country. He's that wealthy. Legit money. Not fucking criminal drug dealing money. So that's how bad and that's how well we are today as a, as a country. So I feel so sad when I see our own emotions. I want you guys, when you feel your anger and everything, don't, don't be you angry first. You know, angry preach Peter that sacrifice that spent billions. There are some information we have that we don't move out and, and see. How much that man spent? There's a reason Peter self funded Peter self funded that he, this campaign 80 percent. I use the money 80 percent billions. Billions. Him money, EFC should be arrested because that legit money. So please, guys, that's what you guys understand. So when you feel like you like, you know, pay nothing, pay anybody past that man. You know, pay not pass anybody. So when you think and you feel, always remember that the man that you are feeling and you think should be the vehicle of giving a new Nigeria, it a feel him as you feel and pass. And hopefully tomorrow we'll have that conversation with him on the platform. On the power fact, so if you have rush, 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 very important. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, please. Up on the jumbo throne, copy the link of our YouTube channel, post it on your, on your stories. Invite Nigerians to come out tomorrow and listen to their president. Hopefully, there's going to be a Zoom link also. But we're going to we're trying to make sure that it is multifaceted the discussions. 
as it's happening on, 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 on Twitter, it's happening on Zoom, it's happening on Facebook, it's happening. So everybody can listen tomorrow because as we always say, we don't have the media. Arise, we, arise is just that. Uh, 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 arise is by his partisan. We don't have any, we don't have anybody. You know? We are our own media. Yeah. So I see some so it, and this and this bit of this coming here tomorrow is not it's not a violent space. It's an obedient thing. It is your own thing. It's your pride. So don't look at it like ah. Because some people it's like so for the people to post it is like a big hey. Uh, no 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 no. There's no glory here. Please, it's our stuff. It belongs to every one of us. Please, guys. Thank you very much. I think I'll bring in Jimmy right now. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, I don't know how you're going to take this uh, uh, roll call today, though, because, but I know you, you know how to do it best. So I know, let me bring you into the conversation. Good evening, my brother. Um, how are you doing today? Yeah, my brother. I did fine. Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Saddam. Well made in Nigeria. Uh, hence his drops. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, a couple of people have been in my DM. Uh, Jimmy, you know they co host again. Uh, violence please don't suspend you. No, make I make I talk because they understand. Jimmy is on suspension. Jimmy has blocked seven, <laughs> 17, seven times seven thousand people. And inside us of seven times seven thousand people, seventy thousand are obedient. Where they do shall I where they where they come where they come talk nonsense or idea. <laughs> if you don't say that wow 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 you go boom boom you don't block so when we open space like this and we jimmy's co-host uh the moment jimmy becomes co-host all of them will lost from the space and they lost the space anymore so rapture just catch them rapture will just put it in account so if jimmy becomes co-host i'm certain many of you here will not be on the space so that's why he's a special he's a special co-host he's, not, he's a co-host but special he's, he's a special ghost so it's not on jimmy's on the house yeah thank you jimmy goes. <laughs> 